Welsh Rugby Show is proudly brought to you by Concordia Clinic Liverpool, combining a wealth of experience and a passion for sport, health and well-being. Concordia Clinic Liverpool, helping you feel better and stay better. Joining Dave and myself this week on the Dockhouse Rugby Show is Rochdale Hornets chairman, Andy Maisie. Andy, thanks for coming along. Thanks, Keith. Great to be here. Thanks for coming on board, mate. Thanks for coming on board. Dave, this week, I want to... Go through a couple of topics with you uh, and Andy. Uh, and the first one, uh, it's going to be about um, being the chairman of a rugby league team. That's not something everybody can boast to have uh, or, and, and talk about. So um, I'd like to talk through it. Dave, you've you've teed up a couple of questions for us as well, for, for Andy. Yeah, well, you're right, Keith. It's fascinating, really, to have on the show with us someone who is a chairman of a rugby league. Um, That's easy uh, for you to say. Yeah, <laughs> of a rugby league club. Because it's an insight not many people have, so I'm really looking forward to having a chat with you, Andy. And, and the, first of all, what we were interested in hearing about is how did you first get involved in being a chairman of a rugby club? It's a, yeah, how long have we got tonight? But, <laughs> uh, no, I think my me, me involvement in rugby league goes back to I've been involved um, as, a, as a fan, obviously, for a lifetime, uh, through the amateur game and one thing or another. And then going back to 2012, 13, I was involved as a director at Lee Centurions. And from there, I, I left Lee and uh, no intention of getting back involved. But there's a few guys over at Swinton at the time. John Duffy was the head coach and uh, Stuart Littler was over there. And I'd had a good relationship with these guys at Lee and uh, just ended up going along just to sponsor a few players, really. As you do, you get you know, you get the, the rod comes out and they pull yeah. you in, don't they? And uh, <laughs> we, we ended up uh, via my business, we sponsored a few players and just got involved that way at Swinton. And then things moved forward, um, you know, you, you end up doing a little bit more and they hit on hard times in 2017, summer of 2017, and uh, financial crisis. I can, you can call it a crisis. And uh, your first port of call in those circumstances always seems to be the sponsors. You know, they knock on the sponsors' door, can you help us out? And, uh, you know, I ended up, um, I felt really loyal to the lads, to, to, to John and to Stuart, and uh, felt like I needed to try and help them. And we ended up getting involved and... Uh, I suppose the rest is history. We uh, I ended up as chairman there and uh, buying the shareholding from the former f former chairman, and yep. uh, we we very quickly moved that along. We we in the first instance we salvaged it. We we saved it from a hitting a brick wall and a crisis. We turned it round and ended up. Uh, I'd like to think it was remembered as a successful tenure. Yeah, m m most definitely, and, and and thanks for your. You know, for, for for coming and throwing the life ring to a club because for for me growing up, Swinton, you know, Swinton's always been there. It's been a, a synonymous team. It's had its glory days as well with like Les Holiday and and that. So you know, it it has it is steeped in rugby league history. So absolutely, I think the other connection there was my, my uncle actually played in the uh, the great teams of the the late sixties and seventies, etc. Right. So there's a family connection there as well. And uh, I, I always got, you know, in, in the in the early days, I was always welcomed down as a sponsor and the fans were great, even right throughout my tenure, really. Yeah. Um, I had, had a real good rapport with the supporters and uh, it's a great club, you know, very historic club. They'd won a lot of things in, you know, not for many decades, but, you know, they were a really strong club in the in the 60s and, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, I think, um, you know, it really counts for a lot in my eyes. It's not uh, all about the future. You have to give more than a nod and a wink to the past, don't you, and respect it. So yeah, most definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Well, that moves us on, really, to the next topic there. At Swinton, you brought in a number of initiatives. So do you want to talk us through some of those initi initiatives? I think in terms of initiatives, we, um, I, as I've always been, really, at, at Lee, um, everything I did was based around community activity and engaging the community, and we really worked hard to try and do that at Swinton. The difficulties we faced at that particular club were, were that the club wasn't in the, the town of Swinton and it had been outside of the town of Swinton for 30 years so we couldn't really fully connect with the, the community and uh, as a result of that we did as a board you know we had to look at other ways forward and trying to you know maybe f make ourselves attractive to the f you know the direction of travel of the sport and maybe look look to a new way to, to, to sustain the club longer term and that's where the uh, I'm presuming mm. we're referring to the obviously yeah. the Manchester Lions um, situation. Yeah. Yeah. That that was born from that really as um, a way that we felt we could move the club in a new direction that was attractive to broadcasters, attractive to commercial partners, and maybe unlock the potential of Manchester not having a rugby league club. Yeah. So uh, that was the the concept behind it. Uh, so it, it was for the betterment of the club to take it forward. It was. It was. And 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 regardless of what people say, it was done in a very um, respectful way. It was done 
it was a rebrand. It wasn't uh, wiping Swinton off the f off the map. It was always going to be, you know, Swinton would have been at the heart of everything we did. Yeah, Swinton ba still still on the badge. Yeah, um, it was just purely a rebrand, like, like a wrap a, around a, it, a yeah. wrap around it to to make it attractive to, you know, for all the things we've just spoken about really, and to try and take it in a direction <coughs> where you know everything in this day and age is about broadcast and yeah. commerciality, isn't it? And yeah, that was the idea. The brand the brand yeah. was to be attractive to. To unlock real serious potential in, in that Manchester area. Yeah. How how did you initially sell that to people internally in the club before taking it external? Um, I think we you know it wasn't just an overnight sort of thing. We'd we, we'd um, there'd been vibes ab about potentially becoming the Manchester club for many years. Manchester was already on the badge. Right. It, it was geographically the only club really with a Manchester postcode. Um, a lot of people say it's in Salford, but. If you if you talk to the traditionalists in Swinton, they always say that they're a Manchester. You know, yep. we're not Salford, we're Manchester. So right. we, we we tried to play on that, and uh, yeah, I mean it's one. Um, the, the, the the it was done for the for the right reasons, and we felt that it was the right thing. But uh, sometimes you know you can lead a what horse to water, and it doesn't want to necessarily go and have a drink, does it? <laughs> no, no. no. I, always, <laughs> I, I always find this is a great little saying. Um, the only person who tru truly appreciates change is a baby with a wet nappy. <laughs> so absolutely what what kind of what kind of adversity did you come up against then from the people at the club and uh, and those uh surrounding and the followers of the club then well i think it was um and that we did expect it not to be popular in all quarters um obviously there's traditionalists in in, in any any club or any organization isn't there so we didn't feel that it was going to be easy but it was done out of what we felt was necessity and i think longer term you know, they'll possibly still need to look at that in, in at some point in the future, however they do it, because, you know, that that if they don't take that mantle, somebody will. Somebody yeah. will unlock that Manchester potential one you, day. Do you think that's an, um, an inevitability then? That I, that will I, I think so. I, I know there's, um, you know, Manchester Rangers were a, 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 cl a club that were, were ambitious at one point and wanted to try and enter the, uh, the rugby league professional structure, professional game, and, and they had ambitions of becoming the Manchester club. And, and I wouldn't, uh, put it past somebody in the future I don't think you can um, the resistance that you get with the existing clubs mergers are an absolute no-no yeah. people don't want to merge no, no. quite clearly from my experience and our, our experience as a board at Swinton there's a real resistance against rebranding or using an existing club so I think somebody if they were to do the Manchester thing it would be need to probably be a new club a new franchise an investment in a new yeah. a complete new startup yeah um, that may be something that may happen in the future if somebody has ambitions to do that. There's clearly potential there, but you decided to move on. What was it that drove you to, to decide that you were moving on from that? I think we, we as a board sat down and we felt that to be successful, we'd need a large percentage of uh, trust and buy-in on that. And I think sometimes if you feel like you're pushing against the door and it's not unlocked, you, you give up, don't you? And yeah. uh, we just felt that, you know, um, all things considered, uh, it wasn't worth pursuing and that we, you know, we'd, 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 we'd done what I initially came into the club to stabilise it and at the, at the point we took it on in 2017, it was in a, a, situ a, a difficult spot and a, and a tough situation and at the point we left in, in, in uh, September 2019, we'd gone from being, you know, uh, a sort of a club that was on its way out. We'd had a difficult year in 2018. We completely turned, transformed it, turned it round. Yeah. We actually finished ninth with the lowest budget in championship. We finished ninth in 2019. That's good going. So I just felt that if we couldn't move it in the direction we needed to move it, that was the exit point, really. You know, we, right. I didn't feel that that club could go any further than where we were. They've yeah. since been relegated, which sort of uh, proves a point to some degree. I don't like, you know, sort of saying that yeah. too yeah. harshly, but I think it's a you know a real tough struggle at the minute for all clubs and i feel feel that um that had we gone the way we, we we wanted to we could have been possibly looking at you know maybe pushing towards top six in championship and catching the eye of you know everybody talks at the moment about the yorks the bradfords the big city clubs don't they yeah mm. and i felt that we could shoehorn ourselves into that you know in that, that mix with those into that mix and that was the reason because i felt that you know building on a ninth place finish in championship in in, in 19 yeah with the rebrand, a refresh, we had new players lined up to come in of a, a better calibre than what were already at the club. You know, we yeah. were talking to players before I left about potentially signing un under pretense it would have been Manchester Lions. And, you know, it, it would have been exciting, I think. But, uh, 
you know, I'm pleased that they've moved on. You know, we left it in a good place. They were they're in a financially secure position from where they were, and I felt that it was the sort of the time really it's, it wasn't going on. the way we needed to. So it's time to yeah. move on. Yeah. Sometimes that that's the way it works, and you found yourself moving on to another club just a couple of months later. So how did that come about? Well, my missus wasn't very happy about that. I can assure you, but uh, and the guys obviously we over the, the the tenure at Swinton we'd built a really good board and and a, and a, and a group of people that were all mates and we got on fundamentally, yeah. which helps doesn't it you know because oh, yeah. definitely yeah uh and and we'd all sort of back walked away uh, had agreed to walk away at the same time from swinton and uh i don't think any of us have aspirations of jumping straight back into the frying pan but uh but you did yeah we we, <laughs> we um i took a phone call from the chief executive who's still our he works for us now at, Swi at uh, rochdale and steve kerr and he he basically uh, started to sound me out about a bit of sponsorship and then it quickly moved on to, why, why didn't you ever think about coming over here? And it was, no, no chance, mate. I'm not having yeah. that, no. I've had enough of rugby league for now. I'll be back in uh, whenever the time's right, you know. But uh, as he started to tell me about some of the um, the building blocks, as we call them, the potential of the club, you know, the things mm -hmm. that were already in place, it was a, an interesting sort of uh, conversation. And I, I came off it and I thought about it that night and... Uh, I actually, um, I spoke to the, the other guys, the, the board who'd, who'd resigned with me at, at Swinton, and I said, uh, don't laugh at me, um, but have a think about it. And before, I, before you have a think about this, and I told them all this, and they're actually saying, you're mental, you, you, you're daft, you know, we're, we're, not, we're not jumping straight back, as we yeah, said, we're not jumping the fire. straight into it. But as I told them these things about it, it was, yeah, let's go and have a chat, let's mm -hmm. go and have a see and uh, do a bit of due diligence around it. And we decided in the end to have a crack at it because we felt there was... Uh, you know the, the potential there to do something uh, special. So, so Steve had already put a roadmap in place, then, had he? The the, the thing with with Rochdale is, um, in terms of, of of where they were, they were a supporters' own club. So they, Steve was employed as a chief executive to run the club on behalf of uh, 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 the fans, the, 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 yeah. the membership, if you like, yeah. as a society. So Steve had done uh, sort of a, a real sort of holding job in terms of. Um, managing a, a situation where it was struggling a little bit. It had been relegated from the championship. They were struggling uh, a little bit to sustain it in that model. And he put the feelers out. I think he'd been mandated to go and seek some investment or find somebody who may be interested. And and, and, and the timing was probably just right. And, and we got that conversation going. And uh, when I talk about the building blocks, just as examples, really, the stadium is Super League standard um, right. at, at Rochdale. It's, uh, it's a football Club. Football club, yeah. Uh, so it ticks all the boxes for Super League rugby. The training base that we have at Hotwood Hall is uh, what what Toronto Wolfpack were using before they uh, went out of existence. Right. The England uh, national team have trained there, so it's a top top class facility. We have a, a Cat Three Rugby League Academy base there. Our head coach Matt Callan coaches the academy. I know Matt. I played with Matt. So yeah. So from uh, June, I went to school with Matt actually at Rainford. The, well, there you go. I didn't know that, but yeah. uh, all these building blocks, I felt that an academy. And then if you go back a couple of steps on the pathway, you go back to a community game that's vibrant. Mm -hmm. Rochdale Mayfield is probably, in, in my view, one of the best examples of a strong community club in, in the country. Yeah. So, uh, and, and all these were boxes we were ticking. You've got the, a, a community foundation, which we were just at the stages of setting up at Swinton. We already nest an established one, a six or seven year uh, community foundation with community coaches, with funding already in place. Yep. Um, and through that, we're delivering a ladies' team, a wheelchair team, all these things that we had aspirations to do and couldn't really get off the ground. Yeah, um, So, yeah, the blocks, the building blocks were all there, but we just felt that it needed a passionate fan base to embrace a, a, a new bunch of people that were wanting to take it forward. And it all came together to refer to the membership. They had a vote and not a single one voted against us. Fantastic. So it, was, it felt like a sort of... Like a perfect storm. Perfect, yeah, exactly. Exactly yeah, that, yeah. 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 Brilliant. So how far do you think you can take Rochdale now with all those great things you've spoke about, a lot in place, the building blocks? Yeah. How far do you think you can take them? Well, I think that's... <clears throat> all those things we've just discussed were pre-COVID. So COVID came Goddamn along. COVID. Nobody... We, we, when you do due diligence around a business, you'll know yourself, guys, or, or a, a rugby league club or a sporting club, you think you've covered all bases. You know, you sit there and for hours on end as a, a, as a group of people and you thrash out everything. Nobody ever puts on that list a global pandemic, do they? Yeah, the world is going to stop <laughs> that's it, as we know it. That's it. So we didn't see that coming, obviously. And that has changed the landscape, not just of rugby league, but, but society and, 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 and life, hasn't well, it? And yeah, business. Yeah. So 
there's been effects felt right, you know from the covid pandemic but i think also you know in, in terms of we may discuss a few things in further into the uh, conversation about the state of the game generally and the funding cuts etc so while we're we have aspirations and we're ambitious the landscape of the game is changing um so i think from our perspective really it's understanding we've got the potential we've got the building blocks we've got the people committed to wanting to take it forward mm -hmm. it's understanding what the game looks like really and how far yeah. we can take the club within the parameters of what the sport's going to be yeah. moving forward yeah. if you get what i mean there's some unknowns i guess with any mm. business and with rugby league <laughs> quite often with the changing in funding but it sounds as though you're doing a great job and w the doc house rugby show believe in rochdale all nights we wish you all the best of uh, success yeah. andy we really appreciate the support and i think the key i'd like to get across to to the listeners and the viewers is, is that it's a team effort it is very much at the center of everything we do i, I don't like the uh the tag in, in in sport of this owner ownership the, the owner the fans own clubs whether yeah, it's yeah. a private members club or it's a it's a private shareholders club the fans own the own the clubs they belong to the communities they belong to the towns we're merely custodians so we're a team we're a group of people who have, have linked with other stakeholders people who are passionate about the club and we've, we're all in it together and we all want to try and do something with it that's great to hear and Absolutely i'm sure you will yeah yeah i'm sure you will Thanks very much. No, Cheers, Andy. Thank you. And that was coming in from the side, and off goes Hardy.